हेलो फ्रेंड्स एंड वेलकम टू मैट फॉर एम तो आज का हमारा टॉपिक है सब मैंडिबुलर सलाइवरी ग्लैंड तो इट इज़ अ लार्ज सलाइवरी ग्लैंड एंड इट इज़ देयर इन द इंटीरियर पार्ट ऑफ डायगेस्ट्रिक ट्राइंगल इट इज़ 15 टू 20 ग्राम जे शेप्ड मैलोहाइड मसिन डिवाइड्स इट इंटू सुपरफिशियल एंड डीप पार्ट superficial and deep part it is a mixed gland and it is both serous and mucus because it gives serous secretion also and mucus secretion also let us see it so this is our digastric triangle formed by the two digastric bellies anterior belly posterior belly and also the stylohyoid muscle so in this we are having the uh, submandibular salivary gland uh, it is basically j shaped as we can see it is j shaped and it is divided by mylohyoid muscle this is our mylohyoid muscle and its posterior border divides it into superficial part as we can see over here superficial is the part which we can see easily from the surface like if we dissect the skin layers then we can easily see the superficial part so this is the superficial part and then comes the deep part this is the deep part of the submandibular gland and then we will come to its coverings coverings partially enclosed between two layers of deep cervical fascia superficial fascia and deep fascia so superficial fascia superficial fascia tells us that it is uh, enclosed superficially so it will come like this and gets attached to the base of the mandible like this so its proximity is there to the base of the mandible and now we will see the deep part see the deep part will go like this and attached to the mylohyoid line of the mandible so that's what we have mentioned here superficial fascia attached to the base of the mandible and deep fascia to the mylohyoid line of mandible now we will see the superficial part in the superficial part um uh, it is there in the digastric triangle as we have already seen superficial part it is there where in the digastric triangle because deep part is much inner see this doesn't come under the digastric triangle only the superficial part that only comes in the triangle superficial part extend superficially it is there deep to the mandible see superficially deep to the mandible extend up to where mylohyoid line see this is our mylohyoid line so over here it is till there and deep part um like inferior part it overlaps stylohyoid and digastric muscle see this is our mandible and it is overlapping clearly our digastric and stylohyoid muscle the superficial part it is having three surfaces which is inferior medial and lateral so this is the inferior surface or far superficial part this the medial surface and this towards the bone that is the lateral surface lateral inferior and medial surface of the superficial part so now talking about the inferior relations see inferiorly first of all we are having the skin which is covering it like this and then the platysma muscle then we are having the cervical branch of the facial nerve c 
see. This is our cervical branch of facial nerve. This one. Cervical branch of facial nerve. Then the deep fascia. And we have the facial vein. As we can see over here. And the submandibular lymph nodes. Which can be seen here. These are all the inferior relations. Inferior means niche. Niche ki taraf hai wo. Comparatively. Now seeing the lateral surface. It is related to the submandibular fossa on mandible. Let us see it. See this. This is the submandibular fossa on mandible. And there is also insertion of medial pterygoid. This is our medial pterygoid which is there on the lateral side of the gland. This is the lateral side. So first we have seen the fossa, submandibular fossa on mandible and then the medial pterygoid and also the facial artery which has just pierced it. So, the medial surface is in turn divided into anterior, middle and posterior part. Let us see the anterior part. Anterior part. This small area, this is the anterior part and that is related to the mylohyoid muscle which is this. Submental artery which is this. See. How clearly it is related to the anterior part, submental artery, branch of facial artery and also mylohyoid nerve and vessels which is this. This is mylohyoid artery. The middle part is in turn related medially to the following structures. First, it is the hyoglossus muscle which is this styloglossus and also the lingual artery which can be seen here this is the lingual artery and the twelfth nerve this is a twelfth nerve which is also called hypoglossal nerve so these are the medial relation of the middle part posterior part so this is the posterior part of the gland this side posterior part of the gland it is related to stylohyoid styloglossus and 11th nerve stylohyoid styloglossus and the 11th nerve now talking about the deep part extent it is deep to mylohyoid muscle mylohyoid muscle extent it is deep till the mylohyoid muscle see this is the deep part and deep relation is the mylohyoid muscle means it extends from the mylohyoid muscle in the deep part. Superficially it extends to hyoglossus and styloglossus. So this deep part extends superficially till this our hyoglossus muscle and this a styloglossus muscle posteriorly it is continuous with the superficial part around the posterior border of mylohyoid muscle so posteriorly it is related to the posterior border of mylohyoid muscle as we can see here 
and anteriorly anteriorly it is the posti extends till the posterior end of sublingual gland so this is a sublingual gland so anteriorly it extends where till the sublingual gland relation it is between mylohyoid and styloglossus mylohyoid and styloglossus so the deep part is between them between styloglossus and mylohyoid laterally there is mylohyoid c deep part and laterally there is mylohyoid medially medially there is hyoglossus medially hyoglossus above there is lingual nerve this is our lingual nerve above the deep part and also with submandibular ganglion this is our submandibular ganglion and lingual nerve which is just above the gland below there is hypoglossal nerve this is the hypoglossal nerve which is just below it blood supply it is by facial artery means drain in common facial and lingual vein lymph by submandibular lymph nodes which we have already seen nerve supply branch of submandibular ganglion secretory motor fibers sensory fibers they are vasomotor motor and sympathetic fibers they form the plexus on facial artery so our important nerve is a lingual nerve which we have already seen talking about the submandibular duct before starting with the submandibular duct do like share subscribe our channel so you can keep watching our 3d anatomy videos do show your love and support to our channel we have also uploaded many more anatomy videos with 3d lectures and we will be uploading many more soon so give us a thumbs up and do comment if you have any doubt so submandibular duct it is thin walled 5 cm this is our submandibular duct it is between the lingual nerve above and the hypoglossal nerve below and it lies on it runs on basically this our hyoglossus muscle and this duct ends in the mouth cavity basically that too in the frenulum of tongue we will be studying tongue in detail in our next tutorial now talking about the applied part secretion of submandibular gland is more viscous as submandibular gland is mixed gland as we talked about it in the intro it is comparatively more viscous than mucus so there are more chances of formation of calculi or small stones also the duct of the submandibular gland is upwards against gravity so the flow is relatively slow submandibular lymph nodes as we have seen it over here as a deep relation to the superficial part submandibular lymph nodes are 
within and also outside of the gland. If the gland is to be removed, the lymph nodes are affected and they can also cause the carcinoma of tongue. So, when we have to remove the submandibular gland, in case of carcinoma, the lymph nodes are to be removed. If they are not removed, they can cause carcinoma of the tongue. Thank you for watching our video. Do like, share and subscribe for more such tutorials.